Michael Fowler with the World Trade Center Tacoma, your host for today's event. Before we start, let's be sure that we have the interpretation function for all of you. Để theo dõi chương trình bằng tiếng Việt, vui lòng nhấn vào biểu tượng quả địa cầu trên chữ interpretation ở thanh công cụ phía dưới màn hình Zoom và chọn tiếng Việt. Next slide please. This conference has English Vietnamese interpretation. To enjoy all meeting features, especially Vietnamese interpretation, please update your Zoom apps to the latest version. Next slide, please. On the left, the chat box you can use to contact Zoom technical support. The raise, the next, the raise hand to chat with panelists function we won't be using. The Q&A box, you can raise questions to panelists. And the interpretation button, you can listen to interpretation, you can select your language. Next slide, please. Upon clicking interpretation, the globe icon, Choose off if you understand both. Choose English if you understand English. Choose Vietnamese if you only understand Vietnamese. It's recommended to leave the mute uh, original audio by default to follow the audio throughout the meeting. Next slide, please. Questions. Type your questions in either Vietnamese or English. If you have questions about Zoom, type them into the chat box. Vietnamese questions will be interpreted into English. Put questions about webinar content, content into the Q&A box. Next slide, please. Welcome to the Northwest Seaport Alliance. Seattle and Tacoma, a critical link in trade with the U.S. Thank you to the Northwest Seaport Alliance team for coming up with the timely topics to be covered today and the guidance and support for this webinar. I'd also like to acknowledge and thank our Vietnam partners, the Ho Chi Minh City University of Transportation, the Vietnam Logistics and Business Association, and of course the World Trade Center Binh Yong New City. I'd also like to thank our sponsors, the Port of Tacoma, the City of Tacoma, the Tacoma Pierce Chamber of Commerce, and our organizers, the Northwest Seaport Alliance. Without the cooperation and assistance and support of all these organizations, this event would not have been possible. These are our speakers and topics for today. The Port of Seattle Commissioner and Managing Member of the Northwest Seaport Alliance, Sam Cho, will provide introductory remarks. I will discuss the U.S.-Vietnam trade relationship. CEO John Wolf will give an overview of the Northwest Seaport Alliance Gateway. Chief Commercial and Strategy Officer Tong Ju will explain the Northwest Seaport Alliance trade with Vietnam, import supply chain and landside services, and Deputy CEO Don Esterbrook will then cover ocean and rail services. We will answer questions at the end. Please remember you can write them in Vietnamese or in English uh, in the Q&A box. We'll do our best to get to them. First, I'd like to welcome Northwest Seaport Alliance Managing Member Sam Cho to the screen. Thank you, Mike. Thanks for everything you do for us here at the Northwest Seaport Alliance. Um, before I start my remarks, I believe that several of my colleagues from the commission have joined us today. So I'd like to take a second to acknowledge Commissioner Ng, Commissioner Bowman, Keller, and Commissioner Marzano, uh, and thank them for being with us today, uh, being with us today, being here with us today. I think the strong attendance from our commission is a testament to how important we see this partnership. So, on behalf of the Northwest Seaport Alliance, it's my pleasure to welcome our audiences from Vietnam and the US who are joining us for today's program. As an international seaport serving the Trans-Pacific Trade Corridor, free and robust trade is vital 
to the Seattle Tacoma Gateway and the state of Washington, where 40% of all jobs are tied to international trade. We greatly value the business relationships we have built with shippers, carriers, and supply chain partners using our gateway, especially in Vietnam. Um, in a very short period of time, Vietnam has become a top five trading partner for the Northwest Seaport Alliance and our second largest import market. Volumes from Vietnam are up over 50% since the year 2018. And I see that we have some attendees on today's call that are already using the SeaTac Tacoma uh, Gateway, so thank you. I've actually personally been to Vietnam twice when I was in the import and export business myself, once to Saigon and once to Da Nang, and saw the tremendous growth the country is going through uh, firsthand. In fact, it strongly resembled the economic growth of South Korea in the 80s and 90s where my parents immigrated from. Back then, they referred to this as the rise of the Asian tigers. They were economies whose growth was driven by strong exports. And there is no doubt that Vietnam is a part of the next generation of Asian tiger economies. So thank you so much for your business and the opportunity to handle your cargo. We really look forward to growing with you. Uh, for those who are new to the Northwest Seaport Alliance, I wanna thank you for taking the time to get to know our gateway. We're looking forward to sharing with you about our facilities and the key advantages to using the Seattle Tacoma for, to using Seattle Tacoma for your international shipments. We really look forward to earning your business. And, and with that, I'll hand it back to Mike Fowler to get our program started. Thank you, Commissioner Cho. As you know, there's been a change of leadership here in the US. It's brought along with it a change in the US-Vietnam trade environment. Perhaps the biggest change, if expressed in one word, might be multilateralism. I believe that we will have a more multilateral collaborative approach and that will favor that will be favorable for trade with Vietnam. Our current tariff structure, especially with China, has boosted trade with Vietnam and change here is likely to be slow. The administration is busy for now with its focus on pressing domestic national health and economic recovery issues. The new administration is also less focused on trade balance. This is favorable for US Vietnam trade and the US has a, where, where the US has a very large deficit. The possibility of action being taken to balance trade with tariffs or the like has been reduced. Similarly, the previous administration designated Vietnam as a currency manipulator. This designation was formally removed by the U.S. Treasury a few weeks ago. The possibility of trade sanctions on account of this has been reduced. Finally, the formation of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership on Trade, as well as the recent interest on the part of the United Kingdom, Canada, South Korea, the European Union, and China, in joining the other trade pact, the Comprehensive and Progressive Trans-Pacific Partnership, which was originally negotiated by the Obama administration but rejected by the Trump administration, has all contributed to a sense here in the U.S. that we are being left out of the world's most dynamic region for trade. As with addressing the current tar tariff structure, however, I believe the U.S. has work to do at home before it can realistically join the CPTPP. But the chance is now much higher than before, and I believe that joining would give a further boost to U.S.-Vietnam trade. Next slide, please. Let's take a step back and look at the big picture with U.S.-Vietnam trade. Trade took off in 2001 when normal trade relations were established. The impressive blue, red, and green lines represent exports, imports, and total trade. The main factors behind this trade success are Vietnam's ability to manufacture high-quality products at competitive prices, 
regulatory reform, education and training improvements, and infrastructure investment. Vietnam's location also allows it to be integrated into a tight-knit supply chain of component manufacturers, and it's within easy reach of major markets in East Asia, South Asia, and Southeast Asia. This trade will continue to increase, and there are even factors that will work toward offsetting that descending black line on the graph which represents trade balance. One is liquid natural gas, LNG. Vietnam's energy needs are increasing rapidly. To meet this, LNG-fired power plants are being built around the country, and the U.S. is first in line to supply LNG for some of these plants. Another is an expected increase in aerospace purchases, especially from our regional aerospace cluster led by Boeing. This is thanks to Vietnam's rapidly expanding air transport network. And finally, there's food. This past year, Vietnam signed 18 agreements to buy farm produce worth $3 billion from the United States over the next two to three years. Much of that grain, soy, corn, and animal, field will come, an animal feed will come through our Northwest Seaport Alliance terminals. Next slide, please. Now let's focus on the Vietnam-Washington state trade by dollar value. First, in this slide, the star on the left shows Vietnam. The star on the right shows the Northwest Gateway, looking from above the North Northern Hemisphere. The Northwest Gateway is the closest point to the, in, on the US mainland to Vietnam. You can't see this from most maps. <clears throat> Let's look at the numbers. Imports on the left grew by nine times in 10 years, while exports on the right-hand graph more than doubled. What are the specific trade opportunities based on these numbers? For imports, there are gains, which increased 319,000 times. Telephony equipment, an increase of 63,000 times. Toys, an increase of 547,000 times. Radar equipment, which increased from zero to $79 million in the last few years. For exports, it was wheat, which increased 16 times. Milk and cream, an increase of 17 times. Fresh apricots, cherries, peaches, and blueberries, an increase of 61 times, and flour and meal, an increase of 36 times. If you're interested, feel free to contact me by email, info at WTCTA, World Trade Center Tacoma, org, and I'll be happy to share the top 10 imports and exports with you. Next slide, please. There are soft drivers that will also promote our trade connection and bring opportunities. Studies show that having an ethnic network from a region promotes trade from that region and the home country. Washington state has the third largest population of ethnic Vietnamese of our 50 states. And Vietnamese students make up our second largest overseas student population. We also have a strong network of organizations that support this population, ranging from a Vietnamese Chamber of Commerce to professional organizations to cultural, social, and academic organizations. The top photo is of Tet in Seattle, and the lower one is our award-winning University of Washington Vietnamese Student Organization. And thanks to these students with healthy appetites, we have some very good Vietnamese restaurants in our area. In addition to these Vietnamese organizations, the World Trade Center is connected to a web of other support organizations that welcome overseas firms. These include local chambers, as well as economic development organizations at the city, county, state, and federal levels. In conclusion, I believe that the changes in leadership at the top of the U.S will have an overall positive impact on U.S.-Vietnam trade. 
trade between the U.S. and Vietnam will continue to grow, and even more so between our region and Vietnam. Finally, if you're looking to import from the U.S., find partners here for exporting, or looking to establish your own operations here, we at the World Trade Center Tacoma would be more than happy to, ha to work with you. Please contact us at info at WTCTA.org. Now I'd like to welcome CEO of the Northwest Seaport Alliance, John Wolf, to the screen. Thank you, Mike, and thanks to the World Trade Center Tacoma and all of the organizers and sponsors of today's program for making this event possible. And thanks to all of you for joining us this morning for today's webinar. We are so excited to have this opportunity to introduce the Northwest Seaport Alliance Gateway. The Northwest Seaport Alliance is the northernmost port gateway on the U.S. West Coast, located 6,590 nautical miles from Chi Map and 6,340 6, nautical miles from Haiphong. Our location makes the Northwest Seaport Alliance a primary gateway for trade between Asia and the United States. In addition to Vietnam, we do significant trade with China, Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan. Weather patterns in our region are very mild. We don't experience the hurricanes or severe ice and snow conditions you see in other parts of the country that can cause vessel delays. It makes for a very reliable and dependable gateway experience. We are located approximately 3,862 kilometers or 2,407 miles by rail from Chicago, the access point to major consumer markets in the Midwest and the Ohio Valley of the United States. The rail transit from our gateway to Chicago is roughly four and a half days. Our gateway was the first on the west coast of North America to introduce on-dock intermodal rail. And for many years, we were known as the gateway to Chicago for Asian imports. Next slide, please. The Northwest Seaport Alliance is the Marine Cargo Operating Partnership of the ports of Seattle and Tacoma. Established in 2015, the two ports share in planning and investment in marine cargo terminals and other infrastructure for the Seattle-Tacoma Gateway. This allows us to prioritize our investments and focus on building the capacity and capabilities to best serve the Asia-Pacific trade. Next slide, please. The two harbors are located approximately 48 kilometers apart. Both harbors are adjacent to major interstate highways and are within 16 kilometers or 10 miles of the Kent Valley, which is the second largest concentration of industrial warehouse space on the U.S. West Coast. The Northwest Seaport Alliance is the fifth largest gateway in North America for containerized trade handling nearly 3.3 million 20-foot equivalent units of containerized cargo in the year 2020. As part of our four-corner strategy, importers and exporters will select a primary port to diversify supply chain risk in case there is a disruption at any one port. We are the preferred gateway for shippers routing cargo through the Pacific Northwest. Next slide, please. In addition to containers, the Northwest Seaport Alliance also is a major gateway for brake bulk and auto cargo. Next slide, please. Here is an aerial shot of the Tacoma Harbor. The Northwest Seaport Alliance operates on roughly 711 hectares or 1,758 acres of industrial property in the two harbors. The Tacoma Harbor is approximately 
405 hectares or about 1,000 acres. There are four international and two domestic container terminals in the Tacoma Harbor. All international terminals have access to on-dock rail, eliminating the time and cost to dray containers off terminal for rail transfer. This means more efficient handling and faster departures for intact rail cargo heading inland. The two harbors are served by the two West Coast Intercontinental Railroads, the BNSF Railway and the Union Pacific Railway. We have natural deep water harbors and a berth depth of 15.5 meters or approximately 50 feet or greater at all of our international terminals. We are working with the federal government on plans to deepen our waterways to 17.3 meters or approximately 57 feet in both harbors to handle larger ships and increase capacity for the heavier agricultural exports that move through our gateway. Next slide, please. The Northwest Seaport Alliance is investing in strategic terminals in each harbor to ensure we have capacity and big ship handling capabilities to grow our cargo volumes into the future. This is a picture of Husky Terminal in the Tacoma Harbor. We completed major upgrades to this terminal just last summer. The project consisted of berth straightening and strengthening, power upgrades, and the addition of eight 24 wide superpost Panamax cranes at the terminal. The total investment was approximately $240 million or 5.6 trillion Vietnamese dong. With these improvements, the terminal is now capable of handling two 18,000 TU ships simultaneously. Next slide, please. And this is how things look in our Seattle Harbor. We have three international container terminals in our Seattle Harbor, Terminal 18, Terminal 30, and Terminal 5. Next slide, please. Terminal 5 is one of our strategic terminals in the Seattle Harbor and within our gateway. Together, the Northwest Seaport Alliance and our private partners are investing over $300 million, over 7 trillion Vietnamese dong on improvements at Terminal 5. We are very excited about Terminal 5. With on-dock rail, we expect it to be a flagship container terminal, not only within our gateway, but on the whole West Coast once the work is completed. This is a two-phase project, which will strengthen the dock and upgrade utilities and support new superpost Panamax cranes, likely eight to 10 superpost Panamax cranes into the future. We are scheduled to receive four new cranes this June, just a month from now. The North Berth will be fully completed and operational in the first quarter of next year. So I thank you. And now I would like to turn it over to Tong Zhu, Chief Commercial Officer of the Northwest Seaport Alliance. Thank you, Jiang, and good morning. I wanted to take this opportunity to tell you a little bit about Washington State or the other Washington. While Washington DC located on the East Coast drive trade policy uh, us on the West Coast, the state of Washington is focused on building connections with the world to promote mutually beneficial two-way trade. Washington state is one of the most trade dependent states in the US as Commissioner Cho and Mike mentioned. We ranked 10th as an exporter and were the 15th largest importer among 50 US states last year. Our location on the U.S. West Coast and proximity to Vietnam and other markets in Asia 
puts trade, international trade, at the center of what we do. The state of Washington is well known for its share of world famous companies such as Amazon, Boeing, Microsoft, Starbucks, Expeditors, REIs, and many, many more. Washington State, where Seattle and Tacoma are located, consistently ranks among top 10 states in the US as one of the best places for doing business. And as our commissioner mentioned, that our trade with Vietnam has grown substantial, substantially in the last five years. In 2020, our trade with Vietnam reached US dollars 3.2 billion, making Washington state your 10th largest US trading partner. Aside from our airplane exports, Washington apples, Cherries are also very famous in Vietnam. We also export a fair amount of French fries um, to your country. And uh, I should note Seattle and Tacoma harbors are known for handling refrigerated cargo. Next slide, please. Our top trading partners are a reflection of our, of our geographic location on the Trans-Pacific. While China continues to dominate our imports, we have seen volumes with Vietnam increases, increase rapidly over the last few years to become our second largest market for imports, as you can see on, the, on this chart, uh, second to China. Um, as more and more US companies recognize, recognize and rely on Vietnam's manufacturing and sourcing capabilities, I'm confident that trend will continue. Vietnam currently, you, uh, if you shift to the right side, you will notice that Vietnam is not on the chart um, because Vietnam currently is our seventh largest containerized export market. Exports to Vietnam are definitely on the rise and I'm confident with your help, we will see your country break into the top five next year. Next slide. Vietnam is famous for its beautiful crafted furniture and other home goods. I, like Commissioner Cho, um, have been to Vietnam two or three times and have, have a, a couple pieces of lacquerware I brought back from Saigon 16 years ago. Still treasure them, love them. Um, not surprisingly, our gateway handled these as well as many other consumer and industrial products manufactured in Vietnam. Volumes for the two leading commodities, furniture and apparel, were both up more than 50% uh, last year compared to 2019. On the export side, we see a mix of wood products and agricultural commodities Wood pulp and scrap paper exports from the US are largely recycled into packaging uh, materials to support increased exports of goods manufactured in Vietnam. Washington State and our region are a major producer of softwood lumber, which is used in furniture manufacturing and for residential and commercial construction. I'm sure all of you know, uh, but in case you don't know, the best apples in the world are grown in Washington state. It is one of our top exports to Vietnam. Um, and we also export signif significant amount of uh, DDGs, um, a protein rich animal feed um, and other top exports to Vietnam from our gateway. Um, with that, I would like to invite our um, uh, Deputy CEO, Don Esterbrook, to cover the next slide. Thank you. The Seattle and Tacoma Gateway is served by all three of the major ocean carrier alliances, as well as most of the smaller independent ocean carriers with 61 different port connections, we are able to serve every major market in the world and 
It's important to mention the U.S. West Coast remains the fastest transit time option from Asia. And with our consistent and reliable rail connections, we are best suited to handle the time sensitive commodities. In fact, the Seattle and Tacoma Gateway is seven to 10 days faster from Vietnam than those ocean carriers that are calling the East Coast of the United States. Next slide. A great example of expedited service is the PN2 service from Kaimep and Haiphong, which has the fastest transit time of only 20 days from Kaimep and just 17 days from Haiphong. We also have the TPA service with the Ocean Alliance and the newly introduced Zim service, which both offer direct service to and from Kaimet. Next slide. Because of our gateway's ability to accommodate more vessels, we have recently added four brand new independent services calling our gateway and there is available capacity on these ultra large 10,000 and 12,000 TEU vessels. We also have very minimal delays for vessels waiting for birthing space. Next slide. The most significant advantage our gateway is able to offer the marketplace is fast, reliable, and consistent rail connections to the upper Midwest region. In addition, the containers move quickly from vessel to our on-dock rail facilities and depart in less than 48 hours, the very best of any West Coast port. And we have available capacity to accommodate future growth. Next slide, please. I'll hand it back to you, Ms. Tong. Thank you, Dan. So Dan spoke about the service options, operational capability and fluid, um, how fluid our marine terminals are, and the fact that we offer fast and efficient rail connections. Let me speak a little bit about uh, other logistic services we have to offer. Not only do we have um, outstanding ocean and rail connections, we also have a very robust trucking community. Um, roughly, we have 3,500 trucks haul cargo in our gateway on a daily basis. Another advantage to using our gateway is the large supply of industrial warehouses, space, uh, um, uh, uh, transload space near and around our terminals to support distribution and fulfillment activities. The greater Seattle and Tacoma area has the second largest cluster of warehousing on the West, US West Coast. Most of it located within 20 kilometers or less um, to our uh, marine terminals with easy and convenient access to major freeways and rail infrastructure. The other thing I thought it's uh, worth mentioning is that average rent, uh, rental rates on a square foot basis are as much as 25 to 30 percent less uh, than similar, similar space located near ports of LA and Long Beach and Oakland. Um, you may recognize um, some of these uh, retail uh, logos um, who have chosen to locate uh, their distribution centers in our gateway. Here's what I want you to remember. The Northwest Seaport Alliance Gateway in Seattle and Tacoma offer many choices and at a cheaper rates when it comes to shipping. Next slide, please. Um, I thought it's important uh, for me to mention the foreign trade zone and the various advantages associated with that. Uh, basically, these zones are designated sites located inside US borders, but considered outside 
of U.S. Customs Territory. Um, companies uh, can store, assemble, manufacture, and process goods without having to pay custom duties, duty fees until the products leave the zone. Here are the benefits. Companies can defer, reduce, or eliminate customs duties and federal exercise, excise tax, making FTZ a very useful tool to improve cash flow and lowering inventory costs. Next slide, please. I want you to uh, think of uh, Seattle, think of Tacoma. When you think of the word speed, um, this is our speed that starts with two S, um, um, double S. And let me tell you what they stands for. The first S stands for short transit time. Um, our deputy CEO Don mentioned that. The second S, um, stands for service options um, in terms of ocean, rail, and truck, giving you maximum options and really savings compared to other gateways. Uh, P, uh, speed, uh, P. P stands for productivity. We have a very productive workforce and there's no shortage of, um, of uh, longshore our, our workforce. Let me get to the double E. E stands for efficient and reliable service at a lower cost. The second E stands for effective supply chain network with high performing logistics service providers. D, speed, D stands for diversity in terms of your choice of harbor terminals and carrier partners. So when you think about moving your cargo, uh, I want you to think of speed. And next slide, please. Think of speed, think of Seattle and Tacoma. In fact, ask for Seattle and Tacoma. This completes our short presentation. Um, I, now we move into Q and A session. Um, I know I've received um, a number of questions from the audience um, prior to starting of this session. So I will read them and direct them to uh, the panelists here. The first one is, I'm concerned about how to deal with customs, compliance, duties, weight limits, import rules, and regulations. Um, I would like Mike Fuller, would you answer that question? Sure. Um, this, uh, speaking from my own experience as well as that of our members at the World Trade Center who export and import, we generally rely on the combination of the forwarder and the importer. Uh, the forwarder that you and your customers hopefully will choose, many, many forwarders are on the line today, they will hopefully have experience with the commodities that you're shipping and ideally would either have an affiliated customs clearance agent or they're a registered customs clearance agent themselves. Also, the importer has a vested interest in making sure that this, these import regu uh, regu registrations, the regulations, the paperwork, that it's all in order if they don't, they're not going to get their product through customs. If you're exporting to the U.S., I strongly advise that you have a U.S. side uh, forwarding partner uh, and clearance agent, as well as an experienced importer. Uh, the same are required in Vietnam if you're exporting from the U.S. to Vietnam. Thank you, Mike. Let me move to the next question. Um, I think one of the attendees asked, uh, what is the transit time congestion delays? Um, I believe our deputy CEO uh, addressed some of that. Um, and we can certainly come back to this if there's further question about the tra uh, transit times. 
Um, number three, how can I learn more about port fees and shipping rates, inland freight cost? Um, I think Mike touched on that and we will be happy to uh, provide a list of carriers and freight forwarding companies um, in our area. And if you have anything specific, I've included my email on the screen. Um, and I know Mike has his email available. You can certainly direct your quest, specific questions to us and we will, we will um, get back to you in a timely manner. The, here's another question. What are the COVID-19 policy and operations challenges, if any? Um, I would like to call our deputy CEO down to help address that question. Sure. Um, to begin with, all operating facilities have very specific protocol requirements, um, such as the cleaning of all the equipment. Um, there is social distancing required in all the break rooms. And all operational meetings are held outside whenever possible. Um, we also um, have a very uh, detailed process if someone comes into contact uh, with an individual who has COVID or they themselves have COVID, we follow a very diligent tracing practice, identifying any individuals that they may have come into contact with from the day they were confirmed with COVID. So it's a, it's a very thorough process and I'm happy to report we have um, thus far um, done a very good job working with our labor partners, the terminal operators, and we've had very little disruption to service as a result of the COVID virus. Thank you, Dan. Uh, let me move to the next question. How are you dealing with and how can we deal with the lack of containers for shipments to Vietnam? This is a tough question. Um, so I would like to ask our CEO, uh, Wolf, to help address that question. Thank you, Tom, um, and thank you for the question. Uh, one of the ways that we are trying to address uh, the service offerings and equipment availability to you as an importer into uh, the U.S. through our gateway is by increasing those uh, ocean carrier service offerings from Vietnam to Seattle Tacoma. And as you can see by uh, the earlier slide deck, we have had some success there and we are talking with the, uh, the ocean carriers about adding even more services uh, from Vietnam direct to Seattle Tacoma. And we see a huge advantage for you as an importer and for our exporters as well that would like to open new markets in Vietnam uh, by having direct call from Vietnam to Seattle Tacoma. Because as we mentioned earlier, we are not experiencing anywhere near the congestion problems that Southern California is experiencing today. And even to the north of us, the Canadian gateways of Vancouver, BC and Prince Rupert. Our gateway is much more fluid um, and we have consistent, reliable inland rail service to those inland markets as Deputy CEO Esther Brooke mentioned. So um, that is primarily uh, the main way that we're going to uh, create for you more opportunities uh, to have service offerings and equipment available to bring to our marketplace. Thank you, uh, John. Uh, if you could just stay uh, on the screen. There's another question I think you have to answer. Uh, is there a possibility of strike um, at the port or at the, yeah, at the gateway? Yeah, uh, good question. Uh, so currently the short answer is no. Uh, we have very good working relationship with our labor partners here in Seattle, Tacoma. We meet with them on a really on a weekly basis and interact with them in a strong partnership relationship. Um, it is 
clear that uh, a year from now, uh, this summer of uh, 2022, is when the uh, existing West Coast employer labor contract is up for renewal. Um, we are hopeful and optimistic that uh, through healthy negotiations, our labor partners and the employers will come to an agreement so that we will not have any labor disruption on the West Coast. And we as port authorities have come around that issue and encouraged early negotiation between the employers and our labor partners so as to ensure for you as a shipper that we do not have any disruption. Today, um, there is peace on the waterfront and is a good, healthy working relationship uh, on the West Coast and certainly in Seattle and Tacoma. Thanks, John. Um, next question. Reducing cost of procurement for manufacturing inputs. Uh, Mike, I think if you can answer that, I... Uh, sure, I'd, I'd be happy to. Um, if your company has grown to the point where it needs uh, significant enough of quantities of inputs, uh, say you're a manufacturer, for example, it's possible to make direct purchases from the overseas producers. Um, this has become a lot easier thanks to communication technology advances. The World Trade Center Tacoma assists up and coming up op operations in doing this all the time. If you're a U.S. manufacturer, um, please join us next, when, at next Wednesday's event at the same time. Information's on our website. Thanks, Mike. Um, a, couple, a couple more. Um, how can I find a suitable U.S. partner for exporting product to the U.S.? Mike, would you like to answer that? Sure. Um, well, the World Trade Center Tacoma can assist with matchmaking for overseas companies looking to find partners in the U.S. And, and again, you can reach me at info at WTCTA.org. Thank you, Mike. Um, the, the last question is, um, how is uh, CEPR Alliance competitive? What is our competitive advantage comparing to other gateway? I think we um, addressed that through the presentation. And I know we will make this presentation uh, available to, to all participants. Um, with that, I know we've received a few more questions from uh, Q&A. Mike, would you like to take it from here? Uh, yes, yes, we, we have. Um, and there are some, some questions here. The first one is, will the U US energy companies export LNG to Vietnam or will they invest in factories to produce uh, LNG here in Vietnam? Well, I have looked into this a little bit. Uh, I'm not an expert on it, but I do know that some of the power facilities, the LNG power plants being made in Vietnam are being uh, invested in by, um, by companies that, that are also getting the rights to sell LNG directly to those power facilities. I imagine there are others that, uh, I, I imagine there's also uh, cases of investment, but I, I am not uh, in, a, in a perfect position to do that. I don't know if anybody, Tong, um, at the Northwest Seaport Alliance is involved in this. Uh, we can uh, follow up uh, yeah. after, yes. That would be good. I, I, we will follow up with you. Thank you for the question. The next question, is from a lecturer at Ho Chi Minh City University of Transport. And he asks, would you share more information about uh, land bridge by rail service? How many, how many days uh, would, be, would it reduce compared by sea uh, normally? And what, what is the cost differential? Um. May I suggest uh, we take that and follow up directly with the the, um, the person who posed okay. the question because that I wanted to make sure the information we're provided is accurate. Yes. Got it. Um, another question here is how would Northwest Seaport Alliance 
or how could Northwest Seaport Alliance assist in connecting forwarders and importers with exporters interested in the Northwest Seaport Alliance gateway? And um, I, I think that question is from my friend, Terry. So if I could answer that, um, and Terry and, and everyone, that we have a, we maintain and keep up with a list of um, free forwarding companies and custom house broker, um, brokers in the region, and we'll be happy to make that available. And if a personal introduction is needed, we'll be happy to do that as well. And the, the World Trade Center Tacoma uh, can also help with that. Um, we have we have a, a question here about um, if if there is not so much congestion at our gateway, um, does it mean that traffic is under capacity? Um, and uh, it, while other ports are in serious congestion, maybe Don or Don can answer that. Sure. Yeah. Um, it's the former there. We had um, uh, excess capacity, but uh, more importantly, we, we have the ability to expand very quickly. We have a lot of available land um, where we can dray off containers to decongest. So because of uh, the unique situation that we have in which we can handle and accommodate um, additional vessels, loader vessels, that is why we're um, seeing the diverted cargo specifically from Southern California and Canada moving through our gateway. Michael, you're on mute. Thank you. I believe that answers the questions that we have. And uh, with that, uh, if unless there's any uh, anything else, Tone, that you have, I like to uh, close the event uh, with the last slide. Um, I, just uh, um, maybe a sort of call to action. Uh, those of you who are attending, uh, first, again, we thank you for getting up early and take part in this presentation. Uh, we want to take every possible opportunity to help you uh, deepen your understanding about the Seaport Alliance and what our gateway has to offer. And as um, our commissioner and our CEO uh, Wolf mentioned that as soon as the world is open, <laughs> that we will be planning a trip to Vietnam. And we would love to have opportunity to meet many of you, all of you in person. Um, so if you're an organization, a trade related organization or a company that really would like to stay in touch, uh, please feel free to reach out to us via email to email Mike. Or is that John? Well, um, if I may uh, just add one further point to um, some of the questions that were asked about our gateway. Uh, I believe that uh, when new shippers, new importers are thinking of importing to the US and they think of the West Coast, my sense is that the ports of LA and Long Beach are first to come to mind because they're the largest ports in all of North America. And um, what we have experienced through the significant congestion that has occurred in Southern California is that it's created an opportunity for us up here in the Pacific Northwest with the Northwest Seaport Alliance. We've always known about our own strengths and we do our very best to get that message out to the importers that are using the West Coast Gateway. What we've seen is that with the congestion and a shift of volume out of Southern California and using uh, a, a stronger uh, push through our gateway, Seattle Tacoma, that the customers that are new to our gateway are pleasantly surprised and pleased with the service. And so, um, I would encourage you, as Tong said, to um, if, if you see it fit to request of your carrier partners that you'd like, if you haven't experienced our gateway, to try it out. I think you will be pleased because we believe that we offer a supreme service and we're also a, a port uh, 
partnership that is here to help you, to assist you. And so when we provide you our contact information, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, we are here to help you as a solution provider. I think that's one of the strengths of our gateway. At that, this point, I'd like to um, ask Commissioner Cho if he would like to have any final comments as well. Thanks, John. And uh, I appreciate uh, everyone at the Northwest Seaport Alliance for putting all the work into this presentation, as well as our very many guests. We have over, we have 65 attendees right now, which is a tremendous, tremendous uh, number. I just want to reiterate that I really believe that there's an opportunity here uh, for those of you who are looking to export to the U.S. or import from the U.S. to take advantage of this period um, and take advantage of the capacity that we have here at the Northwest Seaport Alliance. Um, all of us here that you've heard from are readily available to answer any questions that you might have after today. So please feel free to email any one of us or all of us for that matter uh, with your questions and inquiries. And uh, I certainly hope that someday in the near future, we can lead a delegation out to Vietnam and meet all, you, all of you in person. So until that day, I, I wish you well and, and safety as we, uh, as we navigate this uh, pandemic. Very good. Uh, with that, uh, I'd like to close with a thank you to all of you for attending, for joining us. Uh, as Tong mentioned, we, we, we have a trade mission uh, scheduled and uh, the World Trade Center's trade mission is scheduled for mid-November. Hopefully we can see you then in person. Thank you to our Vietnam partners, the Ho Chi Minh City University of Transportation, the Vietnam Logistics and Business Association, the World Trade Center, Binh Bin Yong New City, and also to our sponsors, the Port of Tacoma, the City of Tacoma, Tacoma Pierce Chamber of Commerce, and of course, the Northwest Seaport Alliance. Have a nice day. <laughs>